Hi everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Dave Hedeman, the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And uh, this month's video is going to be kind of an introduction to working with IFC files that you're receiving from somewhere else. Um, so IFCs are very popular out there for both import and export from Tecla structures. Um, but I think we're seeing a lot more people receiving IFC files than they used to and we've been really pushing hard on this whole like S to modeling uh, using IFC files if possible um, so I, I wanted to put together this quick video to just go over some of the basics as far as importing locating uh, finding the things that we need to find in the IFC file uh, checking the IFC file to make sure it's the correct type that sort of thing um, so this isn't going to be an exhaustive list of, of everything that you're possibly going to need uh, but hopefully it's going to get you started off on the right foot. Now first off, um, I have a sample IFC file that was sent to me uh, a long time ago and I, I just kind of held on to it. Um, if I open this up, one of the things that you want to look for when you're dealing with an IFC file, especially if it's one that you want to convert into native objects, is you're looking for two things really. You're looking for the IFC uh, 2x3 and you're also looking for a coordination view type. So there's a lot of different flavors of IFC and you can do a lot of reading online about those different types. Um, but if I'm looking to convert to Tecla Structures native, those are the two things that I typically look for. Again, it's not going to be like a you know hard and fast rule or anything, but that's what I try to um, try to find and that's what I try to look for in my IFC files. So if I have those, that means I can convert them into native objects. If it's not that type, I can still usually use it as a visual reference. I just can't convert it uh, into native. So next we're going to look at uh, importing the IFC file. Um, but uh, one of the things I want to touch on is where does this IFC come in? Um, one of the things that you may hear people talking about is origin and project location or project base point. Uh, in Tecla, you can set that project base point. Now, there is going to be the model origin, which is this green cube in your uh, 3D workspace. That's always going to be there. The 0, 0, 0 is your origin. Um, and you can also add additional base points, those project base points, so those reference points to where, you know, where is this model in this virtual 3D space. Now I've already gone ahead and added something in here, um, but you can come in and you can give uh, a base point or multiple base points. You can give them names, descriptions. So this is my uh, IFC uh, project uh, location point. Um, you can add easting and northing uh, coordinates for civil use. You can add locations, and this is typically what I'm focused on is the location XYZ in the model. Uh, you can type that information in. You can also change project rotation. Now why you might want to do this, if you've ever um, deal with an IFC file that's very far from the origin, you can end up with an IFC file that's like literally a thousand feet off in one direction. And in Tecla, Yes, you can work that way, but Tecla functions best when the model is built down here near the origin. Um, there's multiple reasons for that, but we're just kind of going to stick with that point, that you want to try to work near the model origin if you can. So by setting a base point, you're able to work on the project in Tecla structure space near 00, zero um, but you can still keep that project critical information for long-term collaboration and things like that. So I've already gone in and I've added in the data that um, I would have received from an architect or from an engineer uh, for, you know, providing this IFC file. So that data can be set as the default project base point. Um, I'm going to leave it unchecked at this point because I want to show you something else. Um, but I'm going to go ahead then and say close. So now that that's set, and that doesn't have to be set, um, that's just again something that we recommend. You want to try to build things down near zero, zero. Um, but when I go to, and, and I want to import my IFC file, uh, I want to come over here to my reference models, I want to click add model, and then browse to wherever I've got that IFC saved. Now in my example here, I've got it saved right into the model folder so it's easy for me to find. Now here's the, the step where that base point comes into play. Um, I can initially bring it in at the model origin, which if I never set a base point, that's the only option I would have, or I can bring it in um, on the current work plane or on the base point that I defined. 
Um, so let me show you what this model would look like at the model origin because this one isn't too far away But it is definitely away from the origin So I'm gonna go ahead and say add model and allow Tecla to go ahead and take this IFC and kind of read its data and insert it into my model space All right, so I got a notification that it's outside my work area I'm gonna allow Tecla to go ahead and adjust my work area for me and you can see how the model is in here But it's kind of you know, it's up in space at a, at a point that doesn't really make sense. It's, it's almost kind of like floating up there in midair. Um, this one's not too bad as far as being close to zero, zero. So I could probably just run this as is. Uh, a lot of times, though, I, I want my column, you know, whatever the bottom left column to be. I like to be at zero, zero. So that's just personal preference in a lot of cases. But if I have the base point information and I need the base point information, I might as well use it. So... Uh, what I can do, even after the IFC is imported, I can double click on this and I can edit that location. So I'm going to change it to now be the base point that was defined in my project properties and then hit modify and allow Tecla to update the location of this IFC file. Okay, so now that's been located a little bit better. You can see that we've, we've kind of moved the the lower part of the foundation down to zero zero. It's a little bit more located towards the origin point in the Tecla structures model. So that's, again, kind of best practices. You want to keep it as close to zero zero as possible. Okay. So now that I've got this IFC in here, um, I'm a steel guy. So I'm, cr I'm mostly concerned with the steel stuff. I mean, the concrete stuff is useful to me, but it's not my primary point of focus. So for me, a lot of times I need to see the steel. I need to focus on the steel. And there's a couple of different things that we can do here. First off, your IFC may have layers. And this one does. So if I expand the layers property, and let me let me step back here in case you missed how I got here. I have my reference models list. There's the IFC that I've imported. If I double click on that, it's going to bring up the IFC properties, and then I can see the layers. Now if I scroll down through these layers, you can see that I've got some that look like they're talking about floor, uh, some that are talking about walls, and then beams and columns. So the quickest way to get this model down to what I, as a steel guy, <laughs> want to see is typically, I'll, I'll just turn off all the layers, um, to be honest with you. I'll start with everything off, hiding everything, and then I'll start to turn on layers that look like they may be what I need. So I'll turn on just columns. And even though this says S columns, it, the S, you know, as a steel guy may think, oh, that means steel columns. No, that's structural columns. So you can see that I am still getting some of the concrete stuff, but that does also bring in the steel parts. So that's one thing that you can do is just kind of come through here and start turning on just the information that you think might be uh, applicable to you. And as you can see, that makes that model a little bit easier for me to work in. Um, a lot of times you're going to get these models and they don't have just steel or just concrete or only structural stuff. You may have wood. You may have um, architectural elements in there that you need to hide. So that's probably one of the faster ways to, to find those parts. Okay. Now, once you've got the layers figured out, and you know, it might take a little bit of trial and error based on the naming of things to kind of figure some, you know, what's what. But once you've got those figured out, there is kind of another step or another, um, another avenue to finding what you're looking for, and that would be using filters. So um, Tecla has, and I'm, you know, I'm speaking in terms of the steel roll here, it, we have a bunch of out-of-the-box filters for selection and for visual settings. So I've got things like steel beam, steel channel, steel column, and so on and so forth. However, that's only going to work with native Tecla parts. That's not going to work with IFC objects because this is for a Tecla steel beam, and these are not Tecla steel beams, at least not yet. So we can still build visual and selection filters for this, but we just have to do it in a slightly different way. So first off, I want to find an object that's kind of similar to what I'm looking for. So if I grab one of these columns here, oh, let me make sure that I have my objects in components pressed down um, so I can grab a piece inside the IFC file. So I'll grab that column there and I'm going to right click and hit inquire. 
And this is going to bring up some properties about this column in the IFC file. So if I scroll down through here, you can see it's a reference object. Um, it's from the file called sample IFC. If I keep scrolling, though, you can see that, OK, there is some structural data here. It's a 10 by 45. We have some uh, custom attributes that have been added, these PSET, Revit structural analysis, and you know other data. So these are all attributes. These are attributes that I can filter for, that I can search for. I just have to know how to do it. So let me show you the trick to that. If I open up my filter and I have nothing currently set in here, you notice that I can sweep across and I can grab all, all manner of objects. But if I come in here and I say, all right, let's start a new filter and I'm going to add a row. And um, this is going to be a template property because this is just you know under the hood data, so what we consider template data. The property, however, you know we don't have something in here that says uh, p set revit type yada yada yada. We have to um, you know kind of teach this what these different uh, codes are, or what these different attributes are. So I'm going to look here like. Um, I'm specifically looking for wide flange columns, okay? So that, that's an option. I could do maybe steel columns. I could do simply wide flange shapes. Uh, there, there's a couple of things that we could uh, do or a couple of different ways that we could uh, attack this. I could look, there we go, like metal, steel, column material. So that's, you know, that's an option. I'm going to focus on this, though, just as an example. So um, I'm going to do template and then the property the property is this code, this pset column common reference in, in this case if I'm searching for this line. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to hit copy and then I'm going to go to the property field and there is one trick. I can't just paste this in. I have to use the capital external. This is an external bit of data. So if I do external dot and then I paste in the code, I can either click and type in what I want it to look for, or if I'm not quite sure of the exact context, I can hit select from model, and then I can click on this object. And you can see it actually fills in W wide flange column W10 by 45. So it's filling in that external data. Now, if I ran this filter as is, it's only going to pick up W10 by 45 columns. So this might be a little bit too strict. You know, if I come, uh, dragging across here, you can see it's not picking up this column right here. It's not picking up some of these other columns like that one deeper in the in the building. So what I might do here is say, okay, the template uh, is not going to be equal to a specific value, but I want it to contain a certain bit of information. And maybe I want it to contain just that prefix there, that W wide flange. So I'll take out everything else and say apply. And then let's sweep across this. This might actually pick up more than columns at this point. OK, it looks like it doesn't. Ah, that's because it's external PSET column common reference. So I guess the other one would be beam common reference. But as you can see now, I'm grabbing some of those additional columns that I was not previously getting. So you could build a pretty detailed filter here for columns and beams and braces or just certain object types. You can save these filters just like any other. So if I call this my um, uh, IFC wide flange calls and I'll, uh, I'm going to save this as a, a view filter as well. So we'll say save as. So now I've got this filter saved away and if I wanted to visually enable that. There's my IFC wide flange column, so I'll hit modify and we'll hide everything except those objects. So there's all the wide flange columns now. So this just allows me to really nail down exactly what I'm looking for and then if I wanted to you know, convert some of these, I can. So let's actually talk about the conversion process. And um, that'll be the last thing on my list here. I'm approaching 15 minutes in this video, um, and I wanted to keep this short. Um, so the conversion process, way back at the beginning of this video, I talked about um, the type of IFC file. And this is where that coordination view and the IFC 2x3 uh, is, is critical. Um, you need to have the coordination view to convert these objects. If these are a surface geometry, a lot of times they will not convert because it's no longer a column, it's a blob shaped like an eye. 
if that makes any sense. Um, so I know that this is a file that can be converted. You can convert the whole thing at once, but I find it better to do just that portion, and it's why I use my layers and why I use my filters. So I'll select the objects that I want to convert, and then um, on the Manage tab, I'll click the Convert IFC Objects button, and we'll go ahead and run the conversion. So what this is essentially going to do is it's going to look at the data under the hood, it's going to compare it to our shape catalog, and if it finds a match, it's going to go ahead and build those for me. Um, when it's complete, it's also going to pop up this little list showing me what it's done, and you can see that there's the reference name, material, uh, and then we have things like the profile that we actually found over here. So you can kind of review this list. Now if you find that some are not converting, like these are these all worked well, you may be able to force the conversion uh, of an object by clicking this drop down menu and choosing conversion as extrusion. I've noticed that with some files, depending where they come from, it may default to no conversion. So if you see that happening, you can do this conversion as extrusion and try to force it to, to compare it to and to convert it into our native shapes. Um, I've had some luck with that with different IFCs from, uh, from other programs besides uh, like the engineering Revit model that I have here. Um, so anyway, um, I'm going to stop the, the, the video here. Hopefully this gives you some good introductory data as far as what to look for, some adjustments that you can make, and then most imp importantly is like the filtering and the layers is, is the takeaway um, from this video. So um, go ahead and, and leave some comments below if you have any questions, uh, if there's something else you want to know about how these IFC files work. Um, as always, uh, appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.